Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Here we are with the Xiaomi 11T Pro. There's no more me anymore, but here is me in this video. Uh, now, you can see behind me, we have a lovely area. I'm just taking this thing out for a couple of uh, small events, some small outings, uh, this one being in the Temecula Valley, so it's winery time. The thing is, here we are on the wide-angle camera, and I gotta say this already, I'm still already disappointed. The fact that you have a great sensor on here, but then the wide-angle just goes all the way down to 8 megapixels, and this is not 4K video. I hate to start off on a bit of a bummer, but that is a bummer, and you know I'm going to point that out every time it happens. I feel like we can have a lot of fun with the new naming convention. After all, it's now the 11T Pro. They took me out of it. They took me out of it, guys. Anyway, enough with that. Let's go ahead and get into this brand new device. I usually have some pretty good things to say about Xiaomi's designs and their smartphones, and it continues here with the 11T Pro. In this case, we have this brushed backing, but the material is still very glossy. I generally prefer a more matted finish, but this isn't too bad. It does take on fingerprints and smudges quite easily, though. It's at this point, though, that we can go back to the unboxing experience, and I did film the unboxing, but I'm not going to go through too much of the actual process in this video. Like many Xiaomi devices, and like many devices outside of the US, uh, this particular phone actually comes with its own case. It's a simple silicone case, a clear case that you could just put on to get a little bit more grip on top of that glossy finish. And of course, we're gonna be talking about it a little bit more in a second. The 120 watt Xiaomi hypercharged charger is included in the box, which is pretty nuts. And it's part of the reason why this is a pro level device. But let's talk more about that moniker, the word pro at the end of 11T Pro. That starts off with the display, a 6.67 inch AMOLED display capable of 120 hertz refresh rate. Now while this is an AMOLED display which provides extra customization like an always on display, it is worth noting uh, that the fingerprint reader is actually embedded in the power button, it is not under the display. It is a full HD plus panel, but that high refresh rate is going to be quite desirable for anyone looking to game at high frame rates. That of course depends on whether or not the game you are playing supports the high refresh rate. But you should be able to play pretty much everything on here with the Snapdragon 888 at the helm. The speakers are also pretty good. There are dual speakers on here and they are tuned by Harman Kardon. And finally rounding out the spec sheet, we have up to 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of onboard storage. As it turns out, my model has eight gigabytes of RAM, uh, but that 256 gigabytes of onboard storage is what I have. Running through MIUI is still a breeze, opening up all the applications, multitasking, having YouTube playing in a PIP down in the corner, um, and this version of MIUI is still pretty familiar. It does take a little bit of getting used to in terms of uh, swiping down from the top because in this version, you can change this by the way, you can swipe down from either side of that uh, punch hole camera in order to get to either your notifications or the quick settings. But what else makes this a pro level device? It also comes down to the battery life. Now while I actually haven't done any full on testing with the battery life, you do get a 5000 milliamp hour battery in here, which should be able to last for quite some time. But what is really awesome about this is that super fast 120 watt hypercharging. It's exactly what I had to use before I went out to get some camera samples for this camera test. And it's a scenario that probably makes perfect sense for a lot of you out there. If you are out of juice on the phone, but you still need to like take a shower or get ready in the morning, just plug it in and let it go for up to like 20 to 25 minutes and you'll go literally from 0% to 100% in that amount of time. That's exactly what happened, and I was able to get all of the battery back in just one shower session, unplug the phone, and be ready for my entire day, and then some. So with all that said, let's get into the camera test here with these cameras here, which include a 108 megapixel camera. You have to start and almost end on that particular spec because I'm not trying to really be negative about the camera experience on here, but when you look at the spec sheet, it's already a little bit disconcerting when you see 108 megapixel main camera, and then it goes all the way down to an eight megapixel ultra wide as one of the backup lenses. The ultra wide does a fine enough job, I suppose, when it comes to photos. Uh, and you, if you really want to get those more dramatic shots in your stills, you certainly can. Uh, but the disappointment for me comes in when you start taking video. As you know, in these real world camera tests, I like to do a lot of videos. They're basically like vlogs. Uh, but when you go into the camera app and go to the eight megapixel ultra wide, it automatically goes from 4K down to 1080p. 
Without mincing words here, one of the more annoying aspects to this is that switching between the different lenses uh, kind of locks you into different resolutions. So you have to remember to open up that quick settings sandwich menu and then hit 4K when you go back to the main sensor. It's a little tedious and like I said, a little annoying. The third and final sensor on here is a 5 megapixel tele macro camera. Now, say what you will about macro photography. Uh, if you do want to get really close up to your subjects, that's something you can do. And on top of that, you can actually record said subjects because video recording is available via those macro modes. phone as having some cinematic video modes, but they are actually all things that we have seen in the past. Right now you see the movie mode where it literally adds black bars to the top and bottom for a more cinematic feel. Uh, it is really nice to use, especially with that main sensor which has itself a pretty good shallow depth of field built in. But as you can see here from the more page for all of the mode selections, you have the movie effects, which were introduced in the previous generation, and the vlog mode, which has been around for a while. It just guides you uh, to the different clips and different ways of filming that will put together a quick, like, one minute vlog for you. Cheers. Oh. Cheers. Now come over here and cheers. No, no, no. Cheers on the front facing camera. Come here. Oh. <laughs> Framing on the dual video is this so is weird, yeah, I know. And there you go, got it. <laughs> Walking around the Belvino Winery with a nice blend. Uh, here we are on the front facing camera, so let me know what you think of the quality on this here. Issa's uh, propping up over here on a barrel. Hey Issa. <laughs> Again, no 4K on the front facing camera, which is unfortunate. But I will take a look at the frame and uh, through this nice screen that the 11T Pro has, it does look pretty nice, quite vivid colors, pretty good quality. Uh, it's just, you know, 1080p resolution. is good it's not really that bad it's just like I've been saying with like mid-range devices recently you're going to be using that main sensor for the highest quality throughout which is a little bit of a bummer because Xiaomi is over here touting the 11T Pro as a pro level device but what exactly makes this pro level well it's very specific details you're not really going to be using this for all of its sensors or lenses uh, if you are really looking to do some content creation with this again the main sensor is good but then the ultra wide it actually degrades in terms of megapixel count and video resolution recording. Which is really the main bummer that I have with this phone because otherwise it's a very good device. It's just that there are certain tropes that we have seen in like the mid to upper mid range devices that are starting to seep into the flagships. And the spec sheet is basically what you would expect from any other high end smartphone save for maybe one super powered detail, just like with the cameras. In this case, it's the 120 watt charging. Is that a pro level feature? I would love to know what you guys think. And uh, let me know what you think in general about not just the camera quality, but this device in general, the Xiaomi 11T Pro. Again, they took me out of it, so we're just going straight into 11T Pro with this new device. Get into the comment sections down below. Let me know what you think of the photo quality, the video quality, anything in general when it comes to this device. And to see more real world camera tests like this, make sure you drop some likes on this video and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. With all of that said though, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourselves and each other and Enjoy your tea, everybody.